I'm going to begin this video looking at the solubility guidelines. So this says the solubility guidelines for common ionic compounds in water. So recall we will be talking about things like silver nitrate, AgNO3. If that formula is dissolved in water, we'll see an Aq aqueous written next to that. So these are general guidelines for compounds that do dissolve in water and compounds that do not. So if we look at this table, which is in most general chemistry books, soluble ionic compounds are over here. So if we have a metal that is uh, combined with one of these nonmetals, then the compound will be soluble. One thing that is useful to learn is that nitrates, that's this polyatomic ion, NO3 with a minus one charge, nitrates are always soluble. So if we want to put a metal in solution, if we buy the metal nitrate, that means we can always get it to dissolve. So nitrates are always soluble, and this is acetate, C2H3O2 with a minus one charge. Acetates are always also soluble. So I'll put that here. If you read your shampoo bottles or any soap bottles, you'll probably see the word uh, acetate. Okay. So if a metal is combined with chloride, bromide, iodide, or sulfate, those compounds are also soluble. So soluble means we'll write AQ next to that compound. There are exceptions to the rule, and that is listed over here. So if chloride, bromide, or iodide are in the presence of either silver ion, mercury, or lead ions, then we will see the formation of a solid. So the exceptions would form solids. The insoluble compounds are here. So sulfides are notoriously insoluble. So are carbonates, phosphates, and hydroxides. So if we have a metal that's combined with one of these nonmetals, then we're going to write solid next to that. And just like we had exceptions for compounds that are soluble, these exceptions so the insoluble compounds would make the compound able to dissolve in water. So we would see aqueous written. So remember ammonium is one of the few polyatomic ions that's positive. So if we think of the periodic table, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and so forth, hydrogen's not really a metal, but Column one compounds, those are the alkali metals. So if we have a column one metal in an ionic compound, then that compound will also always be soluble. So potassium's here and so forth. So if we look at a periodic table, we'll have a Roman number one. That's not very focused, is it? We'll have a Roman number one written above that. Ammonium is not a metal, but it's named like a metal, and it also behaves as a metal. So ammonium is also an exception to formulas that would remain solids in solution. So for example, if we look at the reaction that we did in a previous video, we took silver nitrate AgNO3, and that would be soluble. Again, it's very good to just remember that nitrates are always soluble. So we had silver nitrate, and we added some potassium iodide to that. So Ki, if we wrote that out, would also dissolve in water. And then if we mix these two together, as we did in a previous video, we would see the formation of a solid. So this is silver in the plus one state, nitrate, oops, I forgot the three, nitrates a minus one, 
potassium ion is a plus one. The iodide ion is also a minus one. So this is a type of double replacement reaction where the metal uh, would switch places with the other metal. So if we mix these together, we would see the formation of a solid. So we could just do uh, switch partners there. AG can get together with I. The ratio is going to be one to one because the charges would cancel to zero. And then potassium would get together with nitrate. So if we were left to determine which one of these formulas was the solid that we saw form in the test tube. If we remember nitrates are always soluble, we could definitely write an AQ here. And then if we look, if we saw a solid, we would know it would be silver iodide. So if we look at the solubility chart, we'll, we'll see that. So if we go up here, iodides are all, are always soluble, well not always, but iodides are listed here as soluble compounds, but the exception is silver. So that means silver ion, when it reacts with the iodide, will form a solid. Okay, so we could write that right here. This would be the precipitate. If we wrote out the complete ionic equation, we have a silver ion plus a nitrate ion from the silver nitrate that's in solution. And then we added the Ki solution, so potassium ion here and the iodide ion is here. And we saw the formation of a solid. AGI. We would not write AQ here. In fact, we should write AQ by each one of these species. We would not write AQ here because the solid formed here. So that would be an S. And then we would write K plus plus NO3 minus. So the complete ionic equation lists everything that's aqueous separated in water. If we cross out the species that are identical on both sides of the arrow, our potassiums will they show up on both sides. Our nitrates show up on both sides. So our net ionic equation would be our silver ion, which we dissolved in the form of silver nitrate, and then the iodide ion, and that was introduced in solution in the form of potassium iodide. Those two ions would form the solid, the white powder that we saw form in the beaker. So a precipitation reaction is really a good way to get an unwanted metal out of drinking water. So I've got another uh, sheet that we're going to look at in just a minute and we're going to use the solubility guidelines to predict whether or not a formula will be soluble or insoluble.